Welcome to the Parasite Podcast, a show about me and you. We are Venom. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Parasite Podcast. And today I have a very awesome guest who uh, has been emailing me and we've been keeping in touch that way. And, you know, before I left social media, we didn't have a lot of time to, you know, get to know each other well on there. But I got to say, since uh, I went to email... You've definitely been keeping up with me, and uh, his name is Leith Null, which is uh, basically the word lethal and the word null from the, the god of the symbiotes mixed together. So the Leith Null, please introduce yourself and tell people where they can find you on social media, my friend. Well, hello. <laughs> I am so pleased to be here, Venom Blog. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, you guys can find me at uh, Twitter at Venom-Vault, Instagram, same thing, Venom-Vault, and check out the Venom Vault Facebook group. It's a wide community to where we share reviews, scoops, and uh, our points of views. It's a great community, and we've shared Venom Vlogs episodes here many of times, and thank you for having me. This is awesome. <laughs> dude, no, and thank you. Like, uh, It's a bummer uh, for me, too, sometimes when people are like, dude, I share your stuff on Facebook all the time, and I go, man, I haven't been on Facebook in like five years. Uh, and I'm like, I feel so bad because I want to like go and like and support and comment. And I'm like, no, fight the urge. Don't go back to Facebook. Um, but it means a lot to me that you're doing that. It, it really does. And I, I also am happy that you're just in general a fan of Venom and that you have are part of a community that talks about Venom off, often. I think a lot of times as fans of things we don't acknowledge each other's communities that much and uh, and so it means a lot that you recognize mine and it's so awesome that you're here to t talk a little bit about yours and share yours so everyone out there please i'll put links to everything he mentioned here i'll put them down below so you guys can go check them out follow the group on facebook follow them on instagram follow them on twitter um i know you don't post that much on twitter and instagram but still guys show support we got to build the family uh bigger because we are venom and we need more venom fans out there Ooh, that was perfect delivery. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, I, I don't read a script. Can you believe it? <laughs> no, not one bit. <laughs> not one bit, man. Yeah. I went to the future and I wrote a script on the episode that we recorded and I brought it back to myself. So it's pretty awesome. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's how you're supposed to podcast, by the way. That's a little insider tip. There you go. Just get a time machine. I travel 101. <laughs> So, so you do, I mean, like, and that's how I know you as is Venom Vault, but I know you go by Leith Null, and I was curious, what, since you are a fan of Venom, like, what is kind of your earliest memories of Venom, and what makes you so intrigued in the character maybe when you were younger, and what do you love about him now? All right, man, uh, gosh, you're going to hear this a lot from people, I'm sure, but my earliest memory of him was from uh, Spider-Man the Animated Series. Nobody watches that. Oh, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. Nice, nice. So, yeah, gosh, I guess it would be the toys, because isn't that what all cartoons are based upon, yes. selling toys? Yeah. And uh, I just fell in love with action figures. Mm -hmm. um, I used to pin Spider-Man up from the ceiling and with Tic Tacs and all that fishing line. But one time in particular, I was a safety patrol in fifth grade. This is when I can really remember it. You know, I was stepping up into, into go, becoming an intermediate school kid, and I had a, a girl I had a crush on. She was working the opposite corner of me, and we, uh, we were doing our thing after school. Well, my buddy's mom came over and asked me what I wanted for my birthday. It was right around the corner. And, you know, because I was going into sixth grade or whatnot, and the girl was right there, I said, oh, I want some football cards and, you know, hockey cards and stuff. <laughs> and so uh, as soon as we got done with safety patrol, I remember running home and calling my buddy up. And I was like, dude, dude, I actually just want Spider-Man and Venom action figures. I'm, I'm sorry I told your mom that. It's just the girl I liked was right there. And I know that's that's kind of me, like, trying to be, an, you know, a, a closet nerd. <laughs> but it, it's, I remember it so fondly because I got a bunch of them that year for my birthday. And it, I just that occasion stuck out to me it's one of the first times i can remember kind of going above and beyond to get and want venom but uh, i was still kind of scared to admit it i guess i hear so you it's definitely action figures action figures well and the cartoon like you said which is awesome and, yeah. you're, and you're right i think especially our generation a lot of people that grew up uh in from the late 80s into the 90s and stuff like that that show really was a, a big window that show x-men batman like 
I think uh, the reason why probably a lot of us still as adults are fans of that stuff is because of that impact that it made on us as kids. And uh, and yeah, I would say probably the main reason I love Venom too is is pretty much mostly revolving around that cartoon and also um, I didn't I missed Venom's origin completely in the comics. I, I wasn't allowed to read Spider Man at the time uh, because yep. because of uh, Craven suicide. <laughs> so my mom was like, "You can never read another Spider Man book." Um, <laughs> and then years later, I was when I was finally old enough to where my mom said, "Fine, you can read Spider Man again. It's fine." Uh, it happened to be Carnage's first appearance. <laughs> oh, dude! <laughs> so it's like, I, so I went from a suicide to a serial killer, like just like that. Um, oh. Yeah. So Spider Man. Yeah. He, my mom was like, "What? What? Like, I thought he was like your friendly neighborhood. Doesn't he live with Iceman? Like my mom, you know?" Uh, so, <laughs> the super friends. Yeah, they were like, yeah, exactly. The amazing friends. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Nope. So um. But that's cool. Uh, action figures are awesome. And do you, I'm guessing you still collect uh, super awesome action figures to this day? Oh, indeed, sir. Yes. <laughs> I, I love action figures probably far, far more than any other collectible. Uh, comics are sweet. Uh, Funko Pops are awesome. Statues. But I just love action figures. Um, huge Marvel Legend fan. Marvel Select. Mm-hmm. All of it, dude. The old Toy Biz. Those are the ones that are that hold dear to my heart. Um like See, they used to have a lot of the, like the aqua fighting ones I yeah. you, like a three-headed serpent venom yes yes and like a crystallized carnage that was like they'd float on little rafts or something it, it was ridiculous but the packaging and just oh the feels man the feels i i get when i see those i remember i, I, I do have most of them i remember i think there was a venom toy where his arms were liquid looking and he was basically a repaint of a hydro man toy Oh yeah, yeah. I don't have that, but dude, I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, there's. They did a lot of stuff with Venom. I mean, it's it's pretty standard when when a character hits the kind of um, popularity that that a character like Venom hits. It's like, all right, we got to make Venom T-shirts and lunch boxes, and and he's got to be in every toy series that comes out this year. Uh, and and we're going to talk about some of that in le- another episode. For those of you who are listening to this, there will be a, you will hear more of uh, Leith Null here on an upcoming episode of the Venom Vlog, where we're going to go through kind of the history of Venom in video games and talk about some of our favorite video games. And so I know you like action figures, and but you're also a big fan of games. But I know. We're going to talk about in another episode, but just as a teaser for everybody, um, you know, what are what are some of your favorite Venom appearances in video games? Oh gosh, well, one of the longest standing ones would be uh, what is it, Spider-Man and Venom Separation Anxiety. Okay, I truly, truly love that game. Uh, the music in it, I don't think it was, was it Green Jelly that did the music in that game as well i don't think so i that's a great question i know we covered it on an episode of mine but that was like two years ago so i can't remember <laughs> right but yeah the music was awesome it uh two-player co-op mm-hmm. you could play as venom it, and you saw all the life foundation symbiotes in that game right definitely one of my true true favorites uh another one would be web of shadows <laughs> i don't want to go too much into that right now but they bump the combat up in that game to a next level and they hyper stylized it and it was fan freaking tastic <laughs> yeah um, we are definitely going to sink our teeth into that book or that that uh that game uh in an upcoming episode because i know you're a big fan of it and besides you and other there's been so many people that like because i've covered ultimate spider-man the video game i've covered separation anxiety and maximum carnage on the on the channel before but everyone's like, talk about Web of Shadows. What are you doing with your life? And I'm like, I'll, I'll get there, I promise. So your your love for that game is going to be my gateway into finally talking about that game on this channel. <laughs> nice, man. Like, yeah, because it's just an all-around symbiote original story. And what more could you ask for for being a fan? That's true. Yeah, it's got it's got a lot of what what we want in in the symbiote storylines and a lot of things that have come kind of become cliche now, but uh, but at the time was still kind of felt fresh and, and, and awesome. Um, Very nice. Yeah. So sweet. So and and earlier, so when I was talking about the things you liked about Venom, you know, at a younger age, what is something you know what keeps you coming back to that character now like are you reading the current comics did you like the movie like what are some because there's so much venom material out there now which is like well i remember when i started this channel everyone was like boo like m you know it's not mcu this movie's gonna flop boo your channel's gonna be your channel will be dead in in like six months and 
Uh, I can't believe I'm here almost 600 episodes later talking about Venom still, but there's so much material out there. So is it that? Is it just that like, hey, this is a dream come true. I've always wanted this much Venom stuff and now I have it. Or are there other things going on that really keep you connected to the character? Uh, I guess growing up, it was the spurts of it randomly hitting me. You know, like I said, like my introduction was young, uh, mainly with the cartoon. And then I, I want to say I went through high school not really following the comics that much but as soon as i got out of high school spider-man 3 was dropping and that brought in a whole new wave of excitement for me and uh, i started going to a local comic book store and checking out some stories and he started getting me some trade paperbacks and next thing you know like a year later i'm making the biggest comic book purchase of my life which was like a a 90 dollar asm 300 and I couldn't believe it walking in there that day. And I was like, oh, my God, this is this is crazy. I've never spent this much on a comic book before. And But just after all the years and the love, I I knew it was something. So after doing that, I, I slowly stayed with it. I just needed the greatest memorable thing I could get of them. And uh, then, let's see, uh, video games were always on and off. Like, I, we're going to talk about this, but what was it marvel nemesis rise of the imperfects yeah do you remember that one? Oh yeah that one i don't know why that struck like an, an additional flair in me at the time when it came out maybe it was its mood or something or the fact that it was having like a a side uh mini series and comics but that that kept my drive going it was just like everywhere i looked there was like a new medium or something that was he was appearing in so often and it kept it just kept me pulling kept me kept digging me back in man and then finally uh i don't know i guess flash he was i just love flash thompson agent venom i just he's yeah it's hard to say if he's my favorite host because i i do love how donnie's written eddie now Mm -hmm. but at the time before donnie's gotten on flash was my favorite host and yeah i read all of his stories i i wasn't reading current when it was coming out but uh i got it shortly afterwards and such and i followed him through the guardians and space night so yeah it was just subtle changes but new ways to mix it up and that's honestly what i like most about the character it's not it's not really the host it's the symbiote i just love the symbiote man (laughs) i can't say it more like it could be almost on anybody and i'm still going to be excited about it and it's it's wrong to say but it's just my feel I don't know. I appreciate that. Actually, I think you're the first person on this sh- any of the shows that I've had, any guests I've had, that have actually said that, where they're like, yeah, the symbiote, you know, put it on anything, and I'll, I'll probably dig it at least enough to keep reading. Um, and that's that's great. I mean, because that, that, I think a lot of times people forget that the symbiote is a living being. It's it's an actual character. It, it can and have it has thoughts. It has goals. It has motivation. Um, and whether you agree with it or not or agree with what the writer's doing with it or not, I always say if you're at least writing it as a character, like I may not agree with everything Donnie's done with it, but the fact that he does put effort into it being a character, because I've never, um, I've only, I read like way back when Flash Thompson was Venom, I maybe read the first like 10 issues and then I kind of fell away from the book and it wasn't because I didn't like it. It wasn't because I didn't like it. It was just, I think it was because of money or I can't remember what I was going through at that time. But um, could have been health things for for all I know. I, I can't remember what year that was, but they now that i'm reading it now one thing i've noticed is that remender has gone out of his way to almost take away the personality of the symbiote by keeping it drugged you know by the government or the secret avengers so flash doesn't have banter with the suit um nice and he doesn't talk to it and i'm like you know i don't like that i go because the symbiote is a character and so like you said what donnie's doing with it it's like hey i may not agree what the symbiote does or what its motivations are but the fact that it has motivations and is a character has made me appreciate that at least part of his run so far so i I'm, that's awesome that you said that because yeah the symbiote's a character and if you're out there writing venom comics you need to damn well treat it like a character <laughs> <laughs> um so flat, it's like a stock puppet that jumps around or something, right? Yeah, like I think sometimes people just you treat know, it like a like a monster, and it's like, well, it's not. It's more than that, though. Yeah, but I'm not gonna lie. The monster version is one of my favorite versions. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I do. I do love the monstrosity of it. <laughs> I just do, man. I'm. I like darker stories and such, and 
yeah, dude, Stegman's artwork and their writing is definitely hitting a good tone with me. Nice. Oh, that's great. So, okay. So, it's, so even still today, you're still reading the book, still buying the figures. Do you have any of the new Marvel Legend figures that recently came out? Oh, uh, yeah. I think I just went to my Target, dude, like yesterday. Uh-huh. And uh, they didn't have anything on the shelves, but on online it showed that they had them, like a few of them in stock. Mm-hmm. And uh, I had to go ask one of the guys working the shelves, and he went out in the back room and he came back with a. Uh, with a Venom and a Carnage for me. So I, I got the two new Venom and Carnage figures. Sweet. Awesome. Heck yeah. Yeah, that's that great. Really cool. Um, yeah, those the, that Carnage came out. I posted my review of him yesterday. He he came out better than I thought, actually. Um, and because uh, I, I, when I saw the picture online, I was kind of like, meh, I have a Carnage. You know, but then when I saw it in person, I was like, okay, I got to have this now. <laughs> I kind of feel the same way, man. I, I, I totally do. It was something about the body, but... Yeah, once you see it in person, the the tentacles and yeah, the texture of the body it, it flows nicely. It does, and actually, that um, I love that the one of those things is coming right out of his Achilles tendon. Um, he's got like a little um, you know, sliver of symbiote coming out of his heel, and I'm like, oh, that's so crazy. Oh, yeah. yeah, and I'm like, that's great. And then that that new head sculpt with the spiral actually looked really cool. The design, right? It almost looked like a a Nick Bradshaw cover. That's to me. It was oh. one of the variants of the uh, Absolute Carnage one. It just really spot on to Nick Bradshaw that that spiral head. Nice, and and I've Me had personally. Yeah, okay, I can see that actually. That's that's actually a, a really great observation. And I, and then you just mentioned this because I've only had like one or two people on the show that have mentioned variants. Are you a variant collector? Uh, I am, but with the amount that is coming out right now. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, it, it's it's really. <laughs> It hurts my feelings in some degree, but I I do like it. Like you know that they're just milking, you know, the customers, us, the fans. <laughs> right. But we're getting to see new original art. Well, a lot of new original art. Some of them are, yeah, sketch covers turned into covers. Sure. And other such, but uh, yeah, I, I I do chase most of them. What I really like to chase though is the ratio variants. Those ones I feel like are more bang for the buck. Okay. Well, I'm not much of a virgin hunter, you know, with the virgin covers, right. with no print and all that. Yeah. So those those are cool sometimes, but I prefer the standard trade dress. I like to see a comic book cover the way it's supposed to be. And when they put, like, Venom up in the corner or, you know, just him in a unique spot that goes with the trade dress, that tickles my fancy. I, I really – I'll go out of the way to get a nice, unique trade dress cover. But mm-hmm. – yeah, I'm I'm, uh, I'm kind of like that with the Virgin stuff too. Because to me, I'm like, yeah, it's a beautiful piece of art. But if it's on a comic cover, I want the the, the lettering and the barcode. I want all that stuff because it's a comic. I do, man. Yeah, and if and yep. if if you want to make a print of it without all that dressing, then it'll make a good print. You know. Amen. Uh, yes. yes. That's, that's exactly it too, man. Don't charge me fifty bucks for it and have to make a part of a set. Right. It's, it's too much for me right now, but. I, I am currently hunting like the 2012, like one in 50 ratio of venom variants. Those are kind of like a uh, a white whale hunt. Okay. And I, I got a handful of those, but yeah, they're rare. And I try to keep up, but I'm not I'm not chasing everything like I was before with variants. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah, and like you said, in this in this kind of world where they just throw it on everything, because they had, well, they've had carnageized covers. They've they've had venomized covers two or three times now and now they have nullified covers that are coming out um yep. so it, so yeah like they, there is no shortage of seeing uh possessed symbiote people on comic covers <laughs> yep i did order that whole nullified set though because it was on if you pre-ordered it early it was like 19 books for 54 bucks i that's think good. at unknowncomics.com yeah I, yeah that's where i got it nice but i exclusive covers those ones are those are dying fad yeah, for sure. And uh, and yeah, I've used Unknown before. I think I did a couple orders in the first two seasons of this show when I first discovered who they were. And uh, and those guys are always awesome. Yeah, you can order whole bundles for really good prices from them sometimes. Nice. I'm glad you like them. I forgot. I shouldn't have plugged them unless I talked to you about that. No, first. that's okay. <laughs> I, I no no no. If you're that's the thing about especially the Parasite podcast. If you're a fan of something, I want to hear about it. And in, in, in uh, that's also my thing is I, whether I agree or not, it doesn't matter. But in this case, I agree because I do like those guys. Very um, nice. Yeah. yeah, they do amazing bundles, man. Like a lot, of, a lot of times. Yeah, they do great work. And then, um, and speaking of prints, because like uh, that's why I brought up prints. So sometimes I'll 
I'll try to pick up a Venom print, and I usually, to give them a plug, I usually use Gray Matter Art um, in New York City. They they do oh, these, yeah. yeah, like probably like once a month or once every other month, they release a Venom print, and they're always gorgeous. They're always limited to like anywhere between 50 and 200 at the most they'll do, and they sell them for like 40 bucks, and it's always great. And sometimes they'll do a pair, like they'll do a Venom print and a Carnage print, and you can buy them both for a discounted price and uh, they ship them fast. They're they're awesome. I love those guys. Do they uh, do they happen to sell those like uh, signed by the artist? Uh, know, t- typically, it depends. So if the, I think if they're limited to like fifty, usually the artist will sign all fifty of them. Um, or if they do two hundred, maybe they'll do fifty of them signed by the artist for a different price. Um, but it kind of varies. So it, I always encourage people to just check their Instagram and their website to to know how they're going to deliver the next print because they usually give you a, a, like a week's notice and they'll say, hey, next Thursday, this goes on sale. And then and they tell you the price and stuff. They sell out pretty quick, don't they? And oh, sometimes, yeah. Sometimes, I would say, maybe. Yeah, like in a day. I have a couple of friends that are in that, in that yeah. game. Yeah, because I, I try to buy from them a lot and uh, and I miss them sometimes. Like I'll be like two days later, I'm like, I'll go in there and it's like sold out. I'm like, yep. <laughs> need an alarm yeah i'm like i well i, I need money <laughs> it's like, Dude, yeah. yeah i'm like oh it's a thursday i'm like well i don't get paid till friday i click on on friday i'm like yep that's, true. that's funny how they do that it's <laughs> yeah. on a Tuesday. i just gotta get better at saving money i guess <laughs> right <laughs> um so uh so you know so we we talked i know we covered comics we covered toys um and you and you are a fan of the new Donny Kate stuff. Are you excited for King and Black? And do you plan on buying? Because I think like Devin Lewis, who's the editor of that series, I think he came out yesterday or something and said he wanted. He was like, "Man, I want to do more tie-ins." I like. He's like, "I think this what? event is so no, good." He didn't. Did he? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did. <laughs> I don't think he was talking. To be fair, I don't know if he was talking about King and Black specifically, but I think he was talking about um, the the just event books in general. But he he mentioned, yeah, when we announced King and Black. We brought a bunch of writers in on like a Zoom call, I guess, and he and we talked out the idea, and a bunch of writers were like, "Hey, can my book tie into that too?" And I guess Devin wanted to say yes to everybody, but like I guess pragmatically they were like, "We can't say yes to every book." Um, but he oh, was hi. like, he was like, "I want to do yes to every book." So, so would you <laughs> like being a fan and being someone who's enjoying this run? Like, obviously, we don't know the full story of what this King and Black's going to be yet, other than it's kind of an invasion story, but. Would do you think more is better in this regard, or, or are you uh, <laughs> just because it's already um, a lot? Okay, well, I, you know, I, I recently got all the tie-ins and kept up with the absolute carnage, right? Mm-hmm. And we were everybody, everybody knows that was man, that was all over the place. Yeah, ah, uh, that was. I liked the event; it, it had a great start and all that stuff. Um, I hope they learn from that. I'm really hesitant now with all the tie-ins, though, after that event. That's... So I, I'm definitely going to read them all. Okay. <laughs> I, can't, I can't 100% say I'm going to buy them all, but I'm okay. going to read them all. And uh, I am so looking forward to it, though, because it, yeah, this this hype that's been around Venom, it, it, it's here. It, it's freaking here. And let's let's go. Let's see how this plays out. <laughs> Nice. And as as a character, like are are you intrigued by the the null concept? I mean, obviously it's in your your name now, your handle. Uh, um, but uh, uh, right, right. Let me play. The reason why I, I kind of made the name too is it's, it's kind of cringy, and uh, it's you know lethal is the beginning of Venom. Mm-hmm. Null's where we're at now, so I felt like it was a great alias to come up with now with how I'm trying to present stuff and whatnot. So it, it's meant to be kind of taken cringy, but. Um, <laughs> Oh, with where Noel's at now, uh, gosh, I, I, what I didn't really care about the character was when they first introduced him, he almost just looked like a venomized, or not venomized, uh, like a, a vampire thunderbolt version of Eddie. You know, I was like, he, he's almost like a mirror copy of him. He has a, his thunderbolt co- colors and just longer, a little bit longer hair. And I wasn't overly impressed. Um, with how they've done uh, the Silver Surfer Black story mm-hmm. and just shown him be such a epic badass, I, I've gotten more hype for him. I don't like the origin of the symbol, neither. That's probably my biggest thing. Is like, don't 
don't retcon the symbol. <laughs> right. And <laughs> so I do like that he's so dark and grimacing and he's metal and he's bringing on this giant new threat and I'm super excited. And yeah, I'm, I am super excited about the character, but there's been a few things that in my reserve back pocket, I'm like, come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I thought the first introduction of Null 2, I thought maybe they were trying to show a darker inside version of Eddie's mind to himself. That's why he looked like that. Like he was the Thunderbolt cover colors and pretty similar, but no, if that wasn't the case, he's, he's still humanoid and uh, he's an ancient deity. So that's cool. Yeah. I, um, you know, and I tell people that all the time I go, just cause you're critical of something doesn't mean you can't love it. So it's, you could be like, yeah, I'm interested in this character and I want to learn more. But I do have some questions, like, uh, like for example, and I do this too, like, and I'll put my foot in my mouth. I, I have a video that I think went up today where I talk about the reveal of Kindred in the Nick Spencer Spider-Man run and how I was, like, really just crapping all over that character for the entire run. But I loved the rest of it. I was like, yeah, I like how Nick writes Peter and Mary Jane and all these characters and Boomerang, um, but I don't like the Kindred stuff. Well, now that Kindred has been revealed, I'm like, Okay, you you kind of stuck the landing and intrigued me. <laughs> so I'm like, it was good though. I, I heard a lot of mixed opinions on it. You you dug it? Well, I I I I'm like what you said. Like I'm intrigued. Like when they revealed the identity, I'm like, okay, I'm intrigued. But I'm intrigued. Uh -huh. I'm intrigued if it's this. So I say it in my video. Yes. There um, you go. Yeah. Right. I'm like, yep. if if this is the thing that I'm I'm reading from this correctly, then I'm intrigued. If it turns out it's not that, then I will not be intrigued. I won't like yeah. it anymore. Yeah. So it's it's one yeah. of those kind of situations. Nice. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm down for the ride, though, man. I'm I'm probably always gonna stick with the comics. I I can't see myself jumping off. I hear you, and I, you know, honestly, uh, and I, this is one thing I say in a lot of episodes too is. I do get very critical of Donnie, but it's it, it's never personal, obviously, and it's obviously yeah. just my personal taste and stuff. But what I do appreciate that he's done is he's helped keep that wave of Venom popularity going. Like that movie, like he released his comic like four months before the movie came out, five months, and it was selling great, and everyone was loving it because he was riding that big success wave off of Thanos wins and uh, and getting more popular out there and getting a bigger name for himself. He's brought Venom to the level that. Jeff Johns brought Green Lantern to, which was like they took these characters that were always kind of popular in some regard and had a fan base, but he took it to where like more and more people are reading the character and and it's outselling other Marvel books. And and Green Lantern was DC's number one selling book for like eight years, and now Venom's probably gonna be that for the next five, six years. So I I'm so grateful that Donnie is at yep. least doing that, because that's Man, did we need that for as fans who have been loyal to this character for so long? We needed that big time. Yep, yep, dude, and like all the toy shelves are becoming <laughs> yeah just as much Spider Man as as it is Venom right now. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's amazing, dude. I yeah. love it. It's like they can't even tell Spider Man stories anymore without Venom, almost. Which yeah, is which yep. is which well, is kind of uh, why I like the Kindred stuff. I mean, the the Nick Spencer run because I'm like, wow, Venom hasn't showed up at all in this except for. Well, actually, he didn't even show up in the two absolute Carnage tie-ins. It was just Carnage. So so I'm like, man, good for you, Nick Spencer. Like, you've written all of this without doing the easy thing and just having Venom a cameo in your book for a couple issues. Um, so I give him credit for that. But I do hope at some point that uh, that we do get Venom over in the Spider-Man book because Patrick Gleason's been drawing it, and I want to see Patrick Gleason draw Venom, basically. <laughs> yeah, they need to do another tie-up, like team-up tie-up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would love it. Oh, maybe we'll get some Spider-Man issues that'll after Last Remains that'll tie into King and in Black. So we'll probably get that maybe. Sweet. Uh, have you kept up with uh, Symbiote Spider-Man at all? That uh, Peter David's one of my favorite writers, so I have every issue of that book so far and the first two series, and I'm definitely going to be picking up this new one. Cool. Yeah, Very for nice. sure. Um, yeah, those are great too. Did you uh, uh, Spider-Man Life Story? That yeah, one. actually, we did an episode on that, and I'm not going to say you were talking about cringe earlier. I like in my review, I teared up at the end. <laughs> Dude, that, that issue, right? Like, what was it? The last one? Uh huh. Oh yeah. Oh, definitely, man. That hit me so hard in the feels. It was so good. So hard. It was yes. so good, and the the symbiote like literally makes amends with Peter and helps him save the world, but they both die together. I'm like, <sighs> I'm like, that is so amazing. <laughs> it was. 
<laughs> I think I only read like two of those issues out of that miniseries, but I, I'm uh, so thankful for that one. It's so good. Um, and then pretty soon I'll be covering the exact opposite of that book, which is called Spider-Man Reign. Um, and everybody wants me to talk about that. And I'm like, oh, that's the one where Peter Parker has like radioactive semen or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. I read that not too long ago. That was a good read, though. Honestly, that it's like a, it's futuristic. Spider-Man's old, I think. Yeah, something like that. So I think I yeah. read it once years ago, but I, I definitely need a refresher on it. So um, I did like that one a lot. I did. But sweet. yeah, radioactive semen. <laughs> that's what everyone remembers from that book. I'm like, I'm sure there's other cool stuff in it. And they're like, nope, that's it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> All right, whatever. I think there's something really cool about Sandman in it too, right? I think Towards so. I, 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 think I think he's think on one of the covers. Like it's a really yeah. heartfelt, critical moment. Sweet. Oh, good. I love Sandman, so that's cool. I'm down for that. Um, and then lastly, you know, before before we head out, I'm kind of curious. We talked video games, comics, everything. Just real briefly, I'd, I'd love to hear maybe your thoughts on the Venom movie. Did you go see it opening weekend? You know, do you own it? Um, or, you know, I'm just kind of curious oh, yeah. where, where you fall on that line. Oh, yes. Uh, you, I started following your channel with uh, the Venom hype. Like, okay. I actually think uh, RNS. I think you guest appeared on RNS. Yeah. Entertainment. And that's when I first uh, I heard about you. Okay. And what really made me connect with you as a YouTuber and whatnot was I think you talked about the Daniel Way run mm -hmm. and how you enjoyed it. And you've yeah. been like the only person I've ever said that besides myself. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> it was because it was about the symbiote. You know, it didn't, it wasn't really about a host. It was seeking a host, but it was, and it just used far out crazy stuff. And I really enjoyed it. So, uh, yeah. So I started following you with that, with the Venom movie. So I, with watching your channel and the hype building up behind the movie, I knew more so of what to expect. You know, like, they had to work around limitations of the spider symbol and how they're going to present it and whatnot. And uh, so I, I had a lot of hype, especially because of you. You gave me that hype, man. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and so I, I work with a couple people. My one buddy, he's a pretty he's a pretty big comic guy, but he was more so years ago than what he is now, like early 90s and stuff. But he knows all about this. He's really, really good with it. And uh, we worked the same schedule. So we happen to have the day off when it opened up Thursday night and we went and saw it together and we walked out of there and uh, he was pleasantly surprised with it mm -hmm. you know he's like I didn't think they could pull it off without Spider-Man and uh, <clears throat> I I liked it the only thing I'm kind of upset about is like uh, we didn't get an origin for his name right. I felt like that would have been a, a great way of not having the symbol but giving it some more meat and <clears throat> Yeah, it, it was great, though. I, I went and saw it that night. I saw it the next night with my kids. <laughs> and then I saw it one more time in theaters, too. <laughs> and then I, I own pretty much every American version of it. Not open. <laughs> Sweet. And, yeah, dude, I, I'm digging it. I can't wait for the next one. And what's even funnier about that is my buddy, when I walked out of the movie theaters, he, uh, he was the first person to say, like, oh, my God, uh, Sideshow Bob hair. <laughs> and as soon as we walked out of the movie theater, I, tw I didn't tweet it, but I put it on Facebook. And everybody was like, oh, my God, yeah, yes, yeah, Sancho Bob. I was like, right after we walked out of the movie, I was like, damn, dude, like, everybody's liking that comment, dude. <laughs> like, it was so fucking funny. Oh, oh I swear. <laughs> oh, that's okay. That's, we, we allow that on the Parasite podcast. You're good. Oh, dang. Yeah, because uh, no one can come on this. No one can be a guest on a show unless they're 18 or older. So this is more of a, a laid back kind of show for us older people perfect <laughs> so, uh, yeah yeah I, I let one flip that's not bad it's fine we still get pg-13 rating with one more. yeah <laughs> um but yeah i'm so geeked for the movie man and i can't ah i love the hype that you bring behind it and all the inside details uh, I, i'd love it man i'm gonna always watch your videos and i'm always gonna share them dude, thank you so much dude no that's that's very nice of you to say and it, it means a lot to me and I, I you know i always wonder like sometimes i'm like i feel like i'm really grasping at straws sometimes i'm like is this going to be a good topic and it's always the ones that I'm like, no one's going to watch this episode. And then I'm like, just do it because you need to put a video out this week. And I'll put the video out and then people go, dude, that was so awesome. I never knew about extras in movies before. And I'm like, oh, really? Like, you actually found that interesting? I'm like, sweet. Because <laughs> I, I mean, that's the whole reason I wanted to work in movies was because uh, I, I just found the process of uh, all these people, thousands of people working together on one thing, um, which could go horribly right or horribly wrong. You know, you never know. 
I kind of like that. And so I think one thing I always wanted to try to do to this channel was be like, hey, let's talk about some of the things that happen. Like, you know, sometimes you could be doing a cartoon with Spider-Man in it and you could have some executive go, hey, uh, you're, you can do Venom in the show. And they're like, great. And they're like, but it can't be Eddie Brock because we have him. We got to do something else with him somewhere else. And you're just yeah. like, what? And so so you're like, OK, so now I got to do a, Ven- a Spider-Man versus Venom fight with no Eddie Brock. And so sometimes I think people don't understand, like fans don't understand the limitations that you get sometimes when you work with other people's properties and uh and it it can be tough and so i think like my main thing is like man if i can shine a light on a little bit of that and help people understand then when they watch the movie they might not be like well this is a total pile of dog crap they'll they'll sit there and think and go oh they probably couldn't do this because of this and they probably couldn't do that because of that and i think i i guess i just exactly what you brought to the table yeah that's that's what i tried i appreciate i was trying to i was trying to spread that out there too i I was just trying to spread it like fertilizer man it was (laughs) people needed to know that yeah it's tough i mean like i said i worked at sony when spider-man 3 came out and there was when we were gearing up for spider-man 4 and all these different versions of the script even a script me and my friends wrote like there were so many different things going on and limitations and things you couldn't be doing like you get weird notes like i'm like yeah i want to put hobie brown in this script because i love the prowler and i want to kind of have him in the background as a character for a potential future film i was going to put him in the sinister six actually and um and they were like hobie who no get prowler what get that out of here and then and then you see spider verse and they do the uh, you know uncle aaron as prowler and he's a huge hit you know and i'm like and now there's really cool man yeah now now he's in a video game and you're just like he had the moves and everything yeah he's genuine yeah so i'm like see you bastards i was on to something um (laughs) but uh but yeah no i mean but you do you get these notes and you're just like well okay i mean you just got to say you can pick your battles, but sometimes you just gotta say, yeah, "All right, I, I lost this battle because there's just no getting around it." So it's, I, you know, a lot goes into making movies. Like I said, it's it's a thousand people plus working on one thing. Like there was over a thousand cast and crew members on Venom, and when you think about that number and you think about the movie even being relatively decent, that's really nothing short of a miracle. Because usually when you get that many people working together, it's anarchy. Um, it, it muddies it up. It, yeah, it does, and you got, and you're also spending other people's money, so they have to have an influence and an input and stuff. So, it, it can be a lot. So that's why I like talking about stuff, and I'm glad it resonated. I'm glad it kind of turned people's eyes to those kind of conversations because I think if you're going to talk about movies on YouTube, you should talk about those things because they always say like when you're working in business like you you know you want to set people up for success like people who work for you when you're a leader or a supervisor and you also want to explain the why uh, cuz usually when you the people reason people get frustrated in a work environment is cuz you tell them to do something but they don't know why they're doing it so if you give them the why I, that at least in studies have showed in workplaces that that helps people kind of cope with what's going on and so i just kind of apply nine to five blue collar mentality <laughs> you know to my youtube Dude, channel and uh deep, man. and it, it works surprisingly it does it's very well with me and at least with a few other people i know oh that's awesome well do you want to give them any sh- any shout outs to the people of the venom vault all right uh yeah i got a fellow admin there and a couple moderators that you know they just kick butt man and we all uh talk daily and it just helps the you know the gear go around uh i think one of them is a uh, sim- gothic symbiote. symbiote oh, goth. yeah. A- uh, Allie? Yeah, Allie. Yeah. Yep. I yep. can say her name because she's been on the show and she said her name. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she, she's a moderator there too. Awesome. So it, it's, yeah, it, it's a cool cool little niche, man. And it's it's a great community that you're going to see a lot of unique stuff in too. A lot of artwork and custom figures pop up in there, some cosplay uh, a lot of sales happen in there. We try to limit the, the amount of sales, but yeah, you, you see it all in definitely some of the Venom vlog videos. For Aww. sure. And and Ellie shared hers in there too. It was, it was really good. She's so awesome. She's one of the coolest people in the world. And everyone over at the Venom Vault, yeah, I, I try to refrain from using names too much on here, but all of you guys that are over there, Thank you for doing what you're doing. Thanks for spreading the Venom uh, symbiote around. Uh, you know, ever since I saw that Brazil Comic Con three years ago, where people were chanting "We are Venom," and they like had this big blanket over them that made them all turn into, you know, look like a black wave of goo. 
I just thought that was the coolest thing. And I was like, so that's why whenever I hear people have their own pockets, like, you know, with a gothic symbiote, she talks about, she also has a let's scream, let's talk scream account. She talks all about scream. Yeah. Like everyone has their corner, uh, whether it's Venom himself or other symbiotes, like everyone has their favorite. And it's so cool to see so many people talk about it. And now we got you talking about Noel earlier. He's in a video game right now called Marvel Future Fight, and he's impossible to beat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he's uh, he's such an I uh, god, I could throw my phone, man. Um, and you need uh, Eddie's mullet, man. Yeah, I like, do. I know. In the world with yeah. them or something, man. Eddie's mullet is he's got to be my wingman on that fight cuz he's got like tier Lord, 3 man. characters and stuff. Um <laughs> Yeah, man, it, it's such a beast. But then you got like all these symbiotes in the game, and you know, obviously we have Harry Osborn appeared in the, um, you know, the as Venom in the Spider-Man PS4 game, and we're gonna get more of that probably. And you and I, we're definitely this is not goodbye because we're gonna definitely do another episode, right. and we're gonna talk more about video games oh, there. Yeah. So if you guys listen to this episode and you like this episode, which I'm sure you did, because uh, my friend here uh, is super awesome. Make sure you follow. Thank no, you. you're welcome. I'll put all the links down below. Check out all of his stuff, and we will come back for a Venom vlog episode very soon where we talk about uh, just kind of the history of Venom in video games and kind of just not every single thing he's appeared in but we'll talk about a, a few of them and definitely our favorite ones for sure so make sure you stay subscribed so you don't miss that out yeah you excited yeah oh yeah there's gonna be a bunch of uh, surprises I feel awesome well, maybe not a bunch but there's a few for me so I think everybody yeah else me might too have, might be pleasantly surprised agreed so um dude thank you for being on the show I can't thank you enough for that no, thank you, and thank you to the community. You guys are awesome, and until next time. Until next time, we are Venom. <laughs> <laughs> like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and we'll see you next time. Peace.